If you were here Friday and you already wrote this down, go ahead and turn in your notebook where you did write it down. If you were not here on Friday, go ahead and make this your title. It says, what is estimation? Those of you who were here, what is estimation? We wrote it in our notebook. Carl, what is estimation? A good guess. Go ahead and circle the word estimation. A good guess. Heidi, you want to add on to that? Um, a close to your number. Yeah, so when we estimate, we are not finding an exact number. The whole point of estimation is to use friendly numbers and just get a close to number. So we're going to write friendly number. This might be a little different than what we did on Friday, and that's okay. Now I know on Friday we talked about friendly numbers. What are friendly numbers? I know we spent a lot of time talking about friendly numbers. <laughs> on Friday. So yeah, what are friendly numbers? Yeah, numbers you can easily count to with no problem. Normally, these are numbers that are skip counts of 10 or 100. So underneath friendly number, we're going to write skip counts of 10 or 100.
all the family members. Where's all the Okay. All right, so we are going to be talking about a specific strategy to use for estimation. John, you're going to have to save that question for a second. Okay? That's a great question, but I'm not ready to answer it right now. So you can put it in your head for right now, okay? The strategy that we are starting with, there are many ways to estimate. So the strategy that we're starting with is called rounding. So again, if you were not here on Friday, I need you to write this down in your notebook, please. If you were here on Friday, you've got all this already done. When we round, rounding, what we are doing is finding the closest friendly number. And usually it's the closest 10 or closest 100. What that means is if I'm just counting by 10, Finding my closest skip count of 10. If it's the closest 100, finding my closest skip count of 100. Yes? Oh, what if you did like finding name or something? No, it's got to be a friendly number. Can't just be number, it has to be friendly number. That's very specific with rounding. Friendly number. The way we do that is we look where numbers live. Where do numbers live? Where do they live? Jayla? We're looking on a giant number line. So we're going to look on that number line and figure out, okay, now that I'm zoomed in, what is the closest 10? Go ahead and turn to the next blank page. Everybody is doing this, please what we did on Friday. So it should not be the next blank page. We should always be going to the next blank page. Next blank page. So that one. John, what do you need? Now, you're not going to write this, but we talked about this on Friday. What multiple of 10? This is really fancy math language. Who remembers what that means? Multiple of 10. We did talk about that on Friday. Bryson? About. Not about. Not about. Evelyn, you remember? Nope. Colby, sit up. Multiple means like more than one, is going to be our skip count of, what are we skip counting by? 10. Yeah, let's go ahead and write multiple of 10 as your title, because you're going to see that again, and I want you to know what that means. So write just multiple of 10, and then write what that means underneath. So when you see the word multiple, if we're talking in math, I want you to think, oh, we're just talking about skip count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I think Jalen might have asked me this before. You can skip count by 10 starting at any number. Right? 1, 11, 21, 31, 41. Those are all skip counts of 10. I just didn't start at zero. Does that make sense? <laughs> when we're dealing with multiples of 10, always start at zero. 
0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Those are the numbers we're talking about. Yes, technically you can skip count starting at whatever number. Think back to the robot stepper. Sit up, please, gentlemen. Sit up, please, Grayson. You could start at 18 and start stepping. But for this, always start at 0. So far, so good? Right. So we're trying to figure out what skip count of 10 the number 12 is closest to. Jalen already told us that numbers live on a number line. Draw a number line. Should be really good at it. We've drawn a ton of number lines. Pink line to pink line, very straight blue line. Wait, this You're good. I'm not stressed about it, so. Alright, now we need two skip counts of 10. That 12 is going to live in between. So what's going to be my end points, my start and end points, where 12 is also going to be on that number, or sorry, that number line? Is 12 going to be between 0 and 10? No. No? Where is 12 going to be in between? Not 10 and 13, because remember I need skip counts of 10. 10 and, if I keep skip counting, what's my next number? 20, between 10 and 20. Label your number line, 10 and 20. Jalen told us numbers live on a giant number line, that is true. But we're zooming in, we're only looking at numbers 10 through 20, that's it. There are numbers before 10. There are numbers after 20. But we're only zooming in right here. Colby, what? Can you add to like this? We are going to do a midway point, and that helps us place the number correctly. So what Colby is talking about is he said, okay, there are how many numbers between 10 and 20, Colby? There are 10 numbers. Between 10 and 20, I can count them, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I want to find the midway point. That means I need five numbers over here, five numbers over here. That's what makes it the middle. What number is going to be exactly in the middle of 10 and 20? Carl? 10. 10 is not in the middle of 10 and 20. Round? 15. We do that kind of like when we were making our clock. We put the 12 and the 6 and then the 3 and the 9. It just makes it easier to fill in the rest of the numbers so they're in the right spot. Now that I've got 10, 15, and 20, can I easily put 12 on this number line? Yes. Where is 12 going to go? <coughs> we good? Pop it on there. Don't put your arm on the board because it thinks it's the pen. Only put the tip of the pen. All right, Keegan, pop 12 up there. Does that look like a good spot? That works for me. Put 12 on your number line. Put 12 on our number line. John, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't say. I think 12. I think that's the graph for the to go. I think the dead 12 is over there. Say it again. I think normally for king over there, it's 12 over there. Oh, so king. yeah, we can start to imagine. You might put 12 a little bit over this way. Yeah. Because you might have more spots for 13 and 14. That's okay. You can do that in your notebook, John. Now that we have 12 on our number line, we've got it exactly where it's supposed to go. Which skip count of 10 is it closer to? Is it closer to 10? Or is it closer to 20? Bryson? 10. It's so close to 10. That it's literally closer. Now, last time we learned a symbol that means about. Because 12 is not 10. 
I'm going to say number. But it's close to 10. We say 12 is about 10. Does anyone remember that symbol that we learned? The fancy math symbol? Heidi, you remember? Um, it's kind of like a short one. Um, and it means like equal to. Or Doesn't mean equal about. to. It means about. It looks like a sideways S. So 12 is about 10. Yep. That's the math language for the words I'm saying. 12 is about 10. That's the math that matches that thought. Is twelve exactly ten? No, it's not exactly ten. Twelve dollars is definitely different than ten dollars. But they're close. Twelve cookies is close to ten cookies. They're not exactly ten cookies. Next blank page. Or if you've got space underneath. Another number line. You don't need to write that. But draw your another number line. <laughs> This time we're putting the number 66 on a number line. What two skip counts of 10 is 66 going to live in between? Last time Bryson gave us a trick. Bryson, do you by any chance remember that trick? Bryson, I'll remember your genius, that's fine. Last time Bryson said, hey, if you say the number, It'll usually tell you where to start. 66. Did you hear a skip count of 10 in there? What was the skip count of 10 in 66? What was that skip count of 10 that you heard? Rylan. 60. If you're trying to put 66, you probably need 60. Right? What's the next skip count of 10? Madison. 70. 70. Yes, ma'am. Now we need that middle. Ooh, this is a little tricky. What is the middle of 60 to 70? There's only 10 numbers. So the middle of 10 would be 5. It's not going to be 5. Kenzie, you know? 65. 65. Very good. Where's 66 go? Huxley, put 66 on my board. Try to put your fingers so they can't put the marker. Just put the marker. Huxley's going to put 66 on the number line. Go ahead and put 66 on your number line. Huxley, I noticed you put it really close to 65. Why? Because after 65, we come 66. Yeah, we don't have to leave spots for any other numbers. Could you have moved it a little over? Sure. But as long as we're in that general area, we're good. Why is it not back to the summary? Why is it not over here? Yeah. Because we go 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Oh, nope, that's regular. That's regular order. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. All those numbers are there, John. They're just invisible right now. Kind of. All right, let's do our symbol. 66 is about, well, what endpoint is it closest to? <laughs> Call me? 70. 70. Way closer to 70. 66 is about 70. I can tell those of you who are here on Friday this is making a lot of sense. If you weren't here on Friday, this still might be a little tricky. That's okay. We are still using the nearest 10. We're still using skip counts of 10. All right, rude. 
What's going on? All right, I'm going to write on the whiteboard so you guys can still see me. All right, so we've got a number line. And we've got the number 121. We're trying to figure out what is that going to be closest to. We can still use Bryson's strategy of saying the number. 121. 121. What's going to be the end point that I write down? Do you? 120. That makes sense. I need 120 before I can get to 121. What's going to be my next end point? I'm still skip counting by 10. Bryson, where am I at? 130. Very good. I still need a midpoint. What's going to be my middle point? My midpoint. Tatum? 125. Where is 121? We're gonna go. Oh, I need to open up my board. 121. You need it on my number one. That works for me. Should be really close to 120. It's the very next number. 121 is about what? What is 121 round to? It's about what? Evelyn? 120. 120. It's way closer to 120. Way closer to 120. So far, so good? All right, we've got one more to do. Hey, last one. What multiple of 10 is the number 35 closest to? Go ahead and draw number one. Last one we're doing right now, yep. That's a problem you can solve because you can turn the next page. What are my endpoints? Say it. You'll see as the first endpoint when you need the number. Carl, what number are we trying to find? Um, we're trying to find the number. Okay. It's on the board. 35. Say it. Say 35. What skip count of 10 do you hear when you say 35? 30. We got to start at 30. No, thank you. Zach, what's my end point? Uh, 40. 40. I'm still skip counting by 10. What is my midway point? Next one. 35. Ooh. Which end point is 35? What are your thoughts? Madison? Um, close to 30. You think so? Mm -hmm. How far away is 35 from 30? Mm -hmm. How many numbers are there? Uh, four. Four, right? 31, 33, 33, 34. And then we'll be at 35. Well, okay, well, what about how many numbers are in between 35 and 40? Thirty, thirty. 
Miss Miller? Yes? Could you do your attendance, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. I mean, John, if I were to list out 30, what comes next, John? 31. Then what? Then what? 34. Then we're at 35. You keep counting. Do you see how there are four numbers on this side and four numbers on that side? 35 is stuck directly in the middle. So how do I figure it out? It is exactly in the middle. Matka, what are your thoughts? Be convenient, but also not going to happen. We're writing when I have a number exactly in the middle. I will. Always, and I'll pause to give you some time to get that written down. When I have a number exactly in the middle, I will always round up to the next, to the, not next, higher So if it is stuck in the middle, yes, it is literally impossible to figure out what it's closer to because it's closer to both of them. It's equal. So the way that we break that tie, our rule to break that tie is if you're stuck in the middle, you will always go up to the higher one, which means 35 will round to 40. Even though it's not technically closer, that's our rule for this tiebreaker. Every other number, you can figure out which one's closer. The only time we need this rule is if we're stuck directly in the middle. Does that make sense? You got that written down? All right, so let's write our symbol. 35 is about what? Write them. 40. 35 is about 40. 